Hello everybody, John Foster, johnfostertennis.com, Facebook, follow me, hopefully you are, some good information. I got something special for you today, uh, a little different than usual talking about stories. I'm going to tell you about a story about how you teach tennis and how American coaches teach tennis or something that uh, is a standard formula for keep teaching tennis. And I think it's backwards and I'm going to explain why. The formula usually is you want consistency first. Then the second thing you want, direction. The third thing you want, consistency with uh, direction, and then you want depth. And then they get into teaching uh, spin, and then power. So those are the five teaching modes, and that's how you want to do it. Well, uh, we've created something in America, the, the green ball, yellow, uh, red ball, Big money maker, USTA. I think it's awesome. Adds color to the game. Uh, very good. But it's not great, really, to develop players. Here's why. The, when you teach tennis, or when I teach tennis, and I've been doing it 33 years, a little successful. That are going to be uh, uh, get my method out there a little bit, and I think people are going to really catch on to this. You can't, I don't even teach tennis with those balls. Now, I like to entertain with those balls and maybe start off with those balls, but they're not a great way to really play tennis. And I'm going to explain why. Spin is the most important thing you've got to learn. All right? And if you're learning on the, the typical modem of uh, consistency first, you're not developing strokes if you're not spinning the ball. And I think South America and Europe, they got us beat on this most of the times they play on clay. And guess what? When you play on clay courts, you need to learn how to use spin. So they're far, and that's why maybe Europe and South America and everybody's developing tennis players before America. Or at least this is my take on it. Because we're not teaching spin from the first thing. Maybe it comes from California and the hard courts and hitting the ball hard and through the court. Because America's hard courts, okay? You can't control the ball without spin. And if you play two or three years, here's the other hold back on that. If you play, so power was the last thing. Spin and power go together. You got to have racket speed. And if you're used, let's say you're seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, and you learn to hit, play tennis and you bump the ball back and forth and you get pretty good, you win a couple tournaments and you're playing every day and you're beating people and you can hit it over there and hit it over here and you're not always using spin. Guess what? You're using racket speed to hit the ball short or hit the ball deep. And so then you're using a different type of swing. It's, it, there's not a, 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 a built swing that's the same. You're just either coming up on the ball more or driving through the ball more, okay? Which is the way you need to do it. You need, you need to develop power, which is a rhythm. If you develop a rhythm for three or four or five years and become pretty good, you're not used to that fast rhythm. Then you run into somebody like me and I want to teach you tennis. First thing I'm doing is teaching you spin and I want racket speed to develop that spin. You're used to playing it. You're not used to hitting through the ball. Sorry, there might be 1% of the world that I could teach to a high level because you've already developed a certain rhythm for hitting the ball with a certain way you play. You just, you play with that, that consistency. This is just my philosophy and it's how I teach. So let me explain something to you also. I'm going to explain this, this is going to make sense. When you learn to spin the ball at first, okay, on the very first lesson, they're spinning the ball right from the start. Okay. And there's different ways to do that. You can follow me on johnfostertennis.com and find out real soon how to do that and how I do it and learn how to do it. But you're spinning the ball. Okay. Now, you want to work on direction? We do that in the first lesson too. Guess what? You hit the ball a little late, it's going inside out. You hit the ball where, in, right in front of you, it's going straight ahead. You hit the ball a little early, it's going cross court. You learn that with a little bit of practice of hit and spin. So that can all be taught on the first lesson. It's nothing you have to understand. And once you hit it, you have to follow through and have follow through to the direction you're hitting the ball. You can't just go around on it, but that's a whole nother story. Keep in touch and watch. Now, depth. Depth is how much I come up on the ball. If I come up on the ball tremendously, I got more spin. Guess what? Ball goes shorter. You, you, when we get back to rhythm, you have to have a rhythm. Players have a rhythm. And I, I, I don't like it when I see pros say, hey, we're going to work on your game and we're going to try to give you more spin. Guess what? In my 33 years of coaching, plus probably, okay, you, you, a person is made, their rhythm is already ingrained. And if a coach says, hey, we're going to develop more spin, 
and that's the, the amount of spin a person's going to put on the ball regularly has already been made. The foundation's made. It's hard to break that mold. So you got to take what you have and then you can build from that. I hope that makes sense to you. So it's spin and power. That racket speed's important. Direction and depth are determined on ball contact and, and how much ball contact you hit on the ball coming up or going through it. Pretty simple. Okay. Let's get into a couple tennis tips. I have a couple good ones for you today. One is from Nick Saviano, one of the greatest coaches in today's game. I work with Rick Macy. I was fortunate enough to have Nick Saviano teach the high performance coaching program years and years to become a, a USDA high performance coach. And Nick's one of the best of the best. Everybody knows he's worked with everybody, Sloan Stevens and, and all the big hitters on the tour right now on the women's side. He's done that for years and I'm sure he's going to continue to do that more. Here's the tip I got from Nick. Okay, uh, you watch everybody practice. You go out, when you go out, if you're a tournament player and you go out and you don't warm up, you don't run around and then you go on the court and you start hitting the ball and you're hitting the ball and you take one step to the ball. Well, I'm just warming up, coach. And you reach for the ball and then you don't back up right. You're not doing anything right for about 20 minutes. So after about 20 minutes of warming up, doing everything wrong, now you're going to do everything right? Well, for 20 minutes, you just practice being doing everything wrong. It doesn't work that way. When you go out there, what I like to do is the warm-up, once they warm up and they're ready to go, when you're ready to hit the tennis ball, you go on the court and you do everything right, right from the first ball you hit. That's another thing. You don't miss. you got to get used to not missing. People can do that. I'm going to explain that one in another lesson, okay? But you don't miss and you do everything right. Jimmy Connors used to do that. He did short practices, but he did everything right and high intensity, and he had shorter practices doing it that way. So when you go on the tennis court, you do everything right from the warm-up off the tennis court. When you step on the tennis court, you do everything right. All right, tennis tip I have for you. Playing tip. That was a practicing tip. Playing tip I have for you. I was watching a video the other day. Somebody's teaching to serve out wide and serve down the middle. Yeah, that's great. Guess what the most important serve is? Most people don't know this. I've never heard it from another coach. There's, and I've been around a lot of coaches. Maybe they, I just didn't hear them say it. It's to the body. You need the body serve. Okay, and a lot of players can't do that. I grew up pitching, playing quarterback. I'm good at, like, when they're here, I'm going to serve over here because I know they're going to move over to try to hit their forehand. So I'm real good at jamming people. Maybe I have a talent. I don't know. But I believe that talent can be taught to somebody else. You just have to be kind of smart about where they move around and how to serve your ball so you can get it into their body. Here's the things it does. It opens up the wide serve and down the tee. If you've got a wide serve or down, uh, down the middle tee, it doesn't help unless you're jamming the body. If they get used to being jammed, they think they're going to get jammed. You go out wide, you have your ace. All right, so to the body is your most important part. Serve, first or second serve. I, I ask kids all the time, well, what do you, where are you going to hit your serve? Second serve, you're going to hit it out wide to the backhand, forehand. Oh, hit it to the backhand. First of all, girls, girls have a better backhand than a forehand. You don't hit it to their backhand. They might be 50-50 uh, on their forehand return to serve. On their backhand, they're 80%. They don't even realize that. So the backhand's not the answer. And if you want to be consistent, you go to the body. Guess what? You don't have to worry about missing it wide. You've got to get over the net and in the box. So you're taking out the wide miss. So you're going to hit a higher percentage of serves. And at the high level, guess what? They can hit forehands and backhands just as well. So the only good chance you have of hitting a, an aggressive uh, second serve that's going to be effective is to the body and get that short return and then take advantage of that. Last thing, we got it. Um, words of wisdom for you here. I sent this out to a friend the other day. And uh, your routine creates your results. Routine creates results. So what you do, this is very important in tennis, when I, when I work with pros or I work with a high level, before they get ready to go play and any top level player will know this, you develop a routine. And just not only in the pre-routine to going into a match, but pre-routine, getting ready for a tournament and everything. Routine creates success. So when you have a routine and you're winning, stay with it. John Foster Tennis. Check me out on Facebook and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.